G'day everyone, today I'm going to teach you everything you need to know as a beginner about trade and production in Hearts of Iron 4. We'll cover how to set up and adjust production lines, how to increase your factory output, making sure you have enough resources for what you're producing, and more. So make sure you stick around till the end, and I'll give you a bonus tip if you do. Just quickly though, if you do enjoy this and my other videos, please, please, please leave a like and subscribe, please, I need it. I'm nothing without your, val without your validation. But seriously, it does actually help me out a lot. So long story short, your production menu is where you're able to assign factories to make all the equipment that your military needs to defend your land and beat your enemies. The trade menu is where you get the resources to produce that equipment. Thanks for watching. Nah, just joking. So if you open up the production menu here, it's going to show you uh, and give you an overview of the different resources you have available to trade up the top, uh, any buffs or debuffs to your production. Um, you'll also have the option to add new production lines for both your military and naval uh, equipments. What are production lines, am I? Oh, well, they're actually these things down here, and they're probably what you need to worry about most throughout your playthrough. You can see here that each of the production lines will tell you the name and the type of equipment being produced. Uh, it'll tell you how many you're making per day, uh, your production efficiency up the top here, uh, as well as how many resources you need to make the equipment and how many factories are assigned to that line. Above the menus where you add new equipment, you'll see how many factories you have available as well as how many are in use. Um, you can also see the same for your dockyards on the right here. You'll see up in your notifications section, uh, the green one showing you that you've got military factories that are unassigned and the same for your dockyards. If you want to add more factories to a production line, you can simply click inside this box like so just to add uh, one factory each time or you can press this plus button here uh, as well. When there are grey factories in a production line, that means that you don't have enough mills or dockyards to fulfill that request. When you build a new factory or unassign one from another line, they will get assigned to the production line with the gray factories from the top down. Now to add a new production line, you click on one of these menus up here. So you can see the first one is for infantry, equipment and artillery. The next one is for tanks and the third one is for your aircraft. Uh, for now though, we'll add in some truck production. So if you hover over here, you can actually see that this will cost us one steel and one rubber per factory. Uh, it also has a production cost of 2.5, which is basically just how long it will take to build one piece of this equipment versus others. To add it in, you simply click on the truck icon and it will add it to the bottom of your production menu. Uh, the order works similarly to the construction menu, if you've watched my other guide, uh, where factories will be assigned from the top of the menu in a descending order. And if you start running out of resources or have damaged factories, they'll be taken away from the bottom of the menu in an as in ascending order. Fun words. As such, I like to click and drag this one up to the top of the menu, uh, as I would usually add a couple of factories on trucks and trains at the start of the game and let the production efficiency build up and then ignore them. So what's production efficiency? It's this little bar at the top of each of your production lines. Basically, it represents how skilled your factory workers are at building this type of equipment. Uh, imagine, for example, if you've got a factory and you tell them to build guns. As time build, as time goes on, they'll get better practiced and become more efficient, and they'll be able to produce more guns in the same time period. That's pretty much exactly how it works in game. If you remove a factory from a production line and assign it to a different type of equipment, the factory will lose its built-up production efficiency and need time to build it back up again. Generally, you want to avoid changing up your factory production too much so you don't lose the bonus that builds up over time. If you can help it, try to assign a factory to a production line and leave it for as long as possible. I just quickly want to say that if you're the type of player that likes to change their production lines up a lot, then you should make sure you go down the dispersed industry path for the research tree. Uh, it gives you a higher base production efficiency and also a higher retention. So that mitigates some of that efficiency loss when you change your factories over. Okay, so let's pretend we're gonna assign all the factories we have available, but we don't want to make these tanks. So to delete this production line, you just click on this uh, red bin or trash can for you Americans out there, uh, and then hit enter. Now, any factories that were assigned to that production line will be reassigned to any uh, factories at the top of the queue in a descending order, as I said before. 
Okay, so I just had to add in a bunch of extra factories to demonstrate my next point. But the next thing you need to be aware of is how your resources affect production. So if we jump to the resources tab or the trade tab, sorry, it will give you a bit more information than the production menu does. So here we can see up the top the resources we have available uh, as well as any that we don't have available. Um, below each column of resource, you will be able to see how much uh, of that resource our nation extracts. So that's the value that we have available in total. You can see how much we're importing due to trade. Uh, you can also see how much we are exporting uh, and then our need at the next, low, uh, the next level below. So the amount exported is unusable to us and that is based purely off our trade law. So if we jump over to our uh, political menu here, um, trade, free trade will release more of your resources to the market while closed, com closed economy keeps it all to ourselves like Scrooge McDuck or something. Uh, it's not all bad though. Anytime another nation wants to trade for our resources, we actually gain the use of some of their sieves for the time they're gonna be trading them. It's usually done on an eight resource to one sieve ratio. This also runs both ways. For example, if we jump back here, you can see that we need aluminium. Uh, and that is aluminium and not aluminum, again, at you Americans out there. Uh, you can see that we need a shitload of aluminium to build the exuberant amount of bombers that I've got in our production queue. So if we click on the aluminium icon here, it will then show us all the countries that are available to trade with, as well as how many convoys it would take us to do so. So let's trade with France here. So to do so, you just click on uh, the nation, I guess just on this row, uh, and then this will generally sh give you the amount of resources that you need. Uh, it'll automatically pre-fill that, but if not, you can just click on this button here. Um, let me run the game for a second. Cool. Okay, so I messed up before, but <laughs> if we re rewind for a second, uh, so we can see that we have a lot of aluminium that we need to trade with France. So what we're gonna do is you can click on this, uh, the resource icon here. It will give you the list of all the different countries that we need to trade or that we have available to trade with. To do so, you just click on the nation that you do wanna commence trade. Uh, usually it would pre-fill uh, how many resources you need to trade. Um, if it doesn't though, you can click on this button here and it will automatically select the amount of resources that you need, allocate those civilian factories. And if you click send and we just play for a moment, you can now see that our negative 38 aluminium has become two. Um, you can do the same with the rubber here if you like, uh, but generally, you can sort of afford to be minus two or three of a resource without needing to trade for more of it. Now, I'm just gonna cancel the trade we've got with France. So again, if I hit play, it will show us that we're in uh, quite a large deficit again. And if we jump back to the production menu and we have a look at our production line for bombers that we're trying to build. So you can see that we need 60 aluminum in total and 47 rubber. So if we actually hover over the per day production, you can see that due to a lack of resources, we're suffering about a minus 30% penalty to our production. So this is why it's incredibly important to make sure that you've got the resources you need for your production. The more resources that you're lacking, the more severe the penalty gets. So make sure you keep an eye on this. As you research more upgraded or newer equipment types, you're also gonna to wanna to swap out your old production for the new production equipment. So to do so, uh, you can see up the top here, there's actually a notification button. So you can click on that and it would bring you through to the menu uh, as like that. Uh, and then you would look for the equipment that's got the sort of like dark brown grayed out background with the little plus button here. So that will tell you that this equipment is out of date. So if you want to upgrade this equipment line or change it to a different kind of equipment, you just click on it here and then it'll be highlighted which one is the upgraded model. Now, if you've got multiple technologies of the same type in terms of them being like aircraft or infantry equipment or whatever, uh, multiple might be highlighted. So make sure you're looking at what type of equipment it is. So here you can see it's a fighter and then you're looking at the next level up here, which is fighter one. So when we clicked on that, you can see that our production efficiency went down from almost 100% to 
to only 15. So I'll demonstrate again with our bombers here. So you can see we're making two and a half a day, high production efficiency. If we change to the next level up, you can see now we're only making three a week and our production efficiency has dropped right down. The last thing I wanna run through before I give you a quick guide on what to focus on is the logistics menu. So you can see under this icon here, uh, basically the logistics menu will show you all the equipment that you have or don't have in stockpile. And it's a pretty good way to guide you through what you need to put more factories on. So for example, we're about 7,000 guns in deficit here. So that would mean that I'm gonna focus on putting more military factories on guns until we get back into a surplus. It's pretty self-explanatory, but if you do have any questions about this menu, feel free to pop them down in the comments. Okay, so now what to focus on when you're starting out. Generally, I like to avoid any trade at the start of the game and just focus on using my sieves to build more factories. I'll usually, for my production, put in a line for trains and trucks. And as I said before, I'll drag them all the way to the top of the menu, just in case I get any damaged factories. That way they're not gonna lose their production efficiency. So I'll usually put maybe one or two factories on trains, one or two on trucks, and then you can just collapse these menus out of sight, out of mind. Usually one on support equipment. Um, I would delete my aircraft production early on, as well as my tanks, if I don't wanna be building tanks. Uh, I'll keep a couple of factories on my artillery. Uh, then I'll also add a line with a few factories on AA, and then I'll just put the rest on guns. Generally, with the reasoning for having my early game production laid out like this, uh, Toad AA is really, or just AA in general, is really only the... Oh my god, I can't even speak. So my reasoning for having my production laid out like this at the start of the game is AA is pretty much the only support company that you need uh, because it does have good piercing at the start of the game against the enemy's low level tanks. Um, also, it will shoot down a lot of their CAS, um, but it's always a good idea to have a couple of factories on production from this at the very start, as well as for your artillery, uh, because the soft attack needed on your divisions is really important, particularly for special forces. Uh, and then, yeah, I'll just put the rest of my factories on guns because you want to have a good production base for your infantry equipment, so that way you can just get more divisions out in the field faster. Uh, I'll usually try to get about 20 to 25 factories on guns before I worry about building anything else. I don't really worry about building aircraft at the start of the game unless I'm going to be doing some early wars. Like, for example, if you're playing as Germany or Italy or any other aggressive country, uh, the pre-war fighters that you start with as the UK are pretty crap anyway, so they're not really worth building. So wait until you have at least fighter ones or even better fighter twos before you start building them. With your navy, it'll really depend on if you want to go just for the sub-spam route or if you want to go building a surface fleet. Um, I have got a naval guide which outlines this and I'll link that below. Um, but either way, I think it's a good idea to have maybe 10 to 15 factories on dockyards uh, for, of your dockyards on convoys at the start of the game and just throughout just to maintain your trade. Uh, generally, I'll let the destroyers finish and I'll just add the dockyards like this. So when one finishes, they'll work on the next one. I'll just let them all finish up. Uh, the cruisers, so this one's more than half done, so I'll leave him there. Oh, and then I'll just delete the other two, which are under 50%. They just take too long and you don't really need them. Uh, then I'll add the rest of my factories on, on convoys, or my dockyards rather. Uh, and then in terms of your early game production, that's pretty much it, honestly. Like I said, just focus on building up your infantry equipment and getting your sort of base. So once you do need to start pivoting into building more aircraft or tanks or whatever it is you want to focus on, then you're ready to go. So that being it for the production and trade, then now it's time for the bonus tip. Okay, so if you're playing as a nation with a high population, or you just want to keep a lot of your gun production coming through without losing your efficiency when you research a new level of guns, or for any equipment really this works for, um, you can actually leave your older equipment production line and just keep it at the top of your production queue, and then create a new line for the new equipment below it, and then assign all your new factories to that. So over time, your production efficiency will gradually build up on the new form of equipment, and then once, once it reaches a high enough level, you can delete your old line and those factories can go towards your new type of equipment. 
You can also, to get rid of the annoying notification, you can also recommission your outdated equipment uh, by clicking here and that will turn this one green and stop that notification from popping up. I hope you found this helpful and entertaining. And if you did, please leave a like and consider subscribing to see when I post new videos. I also stream on Twitch. My link is in the description. So please stop by and say good day and I'll see you in the next one. Um, let me run the game for a second. This is not working. Why is that not working? Okay, now we click on France. Why is this like this? Mm.